Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to convert between multiple currencies in your Microsoft Access database. I will show you how to switch from US dollars to Canadian dollars using simple math, a DLOOKUP function, and a settings table. But this works with any type of currency, whether you're going to Mexican pesos or euros or Australian dollars or whatever. Today's video comes from Rodney in Buffalo, New York, my old stomping grounds, one of my gold members. Rodney says, we are located near the Canadian border. I know I used to go over there all the time. We do a lot of business in Canada. Is there an easy way to display our prices in both U.S. dollars and Canadian dollars without having to manually change them all the time everywhere in the database? It would be nice to just go into a form in the database once a day and type in the current conversion rate. Yes, Rodney, converting between different currencies is just a matter of math. You find out the conversion rate, you do a little multiplication, and there you go, there's the other price. But if you've got it in this query here, and that form there, and this report over here, it can be a pain. So yeah, it'd be nice to have one spot in the database, like a settings table, for example, where you can put that number there, that currency conversion rate, and then the whole rest of the database just uses that to do the conversion. So let me show you how I would set this up. Couple of prerequisites before we get started. You're going to need to know how to use the DLOOKUP function. That's how we're going to look up that conversion value once we save it in our table. So if you don't know how to use DLOOKUP, go watch this video now. It's on my website. It's on my YouTube channel. Go watch it. I'll wait. Also, you need to know how to use calculated query fields. That's right, so where you take a value in a query and do something else to it and make a calculation on it and you get a whole new field. All right, it's called a calculated query field. Someone recently asked me if you should do calculated fields and tables. No, no. Tables are not for storing calculated values. Tables are for storing regular data. You do any calculations on that data in your queries or directly on your forms, but I like using query fields. So go watch both of those videos if you haven't yet already and then come back. I will wait. Okay, so here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free download off my website. If you don't have a copy already, go grab it. And I am going to put a simple product table in here. So let's go to create and then table design. Let's put in our product ID. That'll be our auto number, the product name. That's short text. Remember, don't ever use just the word name. That's a reserved word. Access to special things with the word name. Let's do a unit price. That'll be a currency value. And I'm going to assume if, if you're a U.S. business, store your, your, your product prices in your database in U.S. dollars. And we'll just convert them over to whatever other currencies you need. Let's save this as my product T, my product table, primary key, yes. Let's go and put some data in here. All right, what are we selling? Let's, we're selling Star Trek stuff. So we got phasers. And let's say they're 100 bucks a piece. We've got uh, photon torpedoes. Those are uh, 350. And let's say we got a shield generator, i.e. shield generator. And that is 333.33 is the reason why I'm picking that number. Okay. All right. Save it. Let's close it. Now let's make a query to convert that over to Canadian dollars. So let's create query design. I will bring in my product T close that you can bring in the star so you can see all the fields and then right over here let's make a field to do the math now we need to know what the conversion rate is so let's go to uh, the google machine and i'll just type in one usd to cad that'll convert one united states dollar to canadian dollars and right now the currency conversion rate is 1.27 that means one dollar us equals 1.27 canadian it's pretty high right now. I've seen it as high as like 1.35 and as low as like 1.08. But I don't live up there anymore, so I don't do a lot with Canadian dollars now. So let's put the calculation right down here. I am going to call this price CAD, and it's going to be the unit price times 1.27. All right, let's save this. I'll call it my product Q, product query and run it and there we go now a couple things there's a reason why i picked this value here look what it comes out to 
423.3291. So the first thing you might want to do is round that number off. We don't want any Superman 3 slash office space penny rounding problems, right? Don't want to have to look into money laundering. Uh, <laughs> so let's round that number to two decimal places. Now, this is all on you, whether you want to round it, chop it off, whatever. I've got a whole separate video. I'll put it in the link section below that talks about the round, int, and fix uh, functions. They all do different things. I also have another video that talks about bankers rounding. Access to something called bankers rounding, where odd numbers get rounded one way, even numbers get rounded another. So I've got videos on all that stuff, but for today, in this video, we're just going to deal with simple rounding. But if you care more about rounding and all that stuff, then go watch those videos. All right, so we're just going to round this round to two decimal places. Here, I'll zoom in so you can see it better, right? There we go, nice and big. Round unit price times 1.27 comma two. Okay, now when I run it, there we go, looks good. And let's finally, you can either format that as currency or you can actually convert it to currency. There's another function you can use called ccur. C-C-U-R, convert it to currency. Okay, and now when you run it, you get an actual currency value in there. Okay. Now, by putting the calculation in here, you've got a query that you can use everywhere else now. So if you only want to put it in the query and then you can use this query in your other forms and reports, then that's fine. That's great. You really want to try to avoid putting this guy in multiple places. But let's say, hypothetically, let's say you do got several different places you have to put that value. You got some other form fields, you got some report fields, and you can't always rely on this product queue. Okay, I get it. So we can store this in a settings table Okay, we'll make a table over here called settings, and then we'll use DLOOKUP, DLOOKUP to pull that value up wherever we happen to be. Okay, so let's create a table, create table design. Now, we're only going to have one record and one field in this table. You can add more fields if you want to later on. If you do multiple currency conversions, you can do that here too, although I will cover that in more detail in the extended cut. But for now, let's just put in here USD2CAD. That'll be the conversion number. The value is going to be a number... And make sure down here you change this to a double. If it's just a long integer, you won't be able to put a fractional part in. All right, I get that question a lot. People send me that question. Hey, I'm typing in $4.42 and it just puts in four. Well, yeah, because you got to either use a currency value for that or if it's a number with a decimal point, you have to use double. There's a couple of different types. I recommend you always stick with double. All right, now let's save this. Yeah, that's the only field we're putting in here. Save this. I'm going to call this my setting T. It's a one record table. All right. Access wants to create a primary key. Say no. This is one of those rare instances where we don't need a key. We got one value, one record. That's it. Okay. It's a quick place to store a value. All right. Then let's put that value in here. US to Canadian dollar is 1.27. That's it. Just one record. Okay. Okay. Now back to our query. Let's come over here. And let's get that value. Let's call this the uh, the CADX, the Canadian dollar rate. All right. And we're going to say, I'm going to zoom in so you can see this. Shift F2. The Canadian dollar rate is going to be D lookup. What are we looking up? The USD to CAD field in the setting table. I try to keep all my table names singular, by the way. Instead of settings T, it's setting T. Okay. Now, normally with D lookup, you could put a criteria after this, but. We only have one record, so that's all we need. Just get the USD to CAD value from that field from the setting table. That's it. Don't worry about what record it is because there's only one record. There only should be one record. All right, hit OK. I'm going to slide this to the left. You don't have to, but I like to put it here because this value is not going to rely on that. So right in here, we're going to replace that with the CADX. Right, right here, instead of putting that number there, CADX. See that? That's what we looked up over here. That's our calculated value. Now you can use it over there. And when I run this now, boom, there we go. It pulls that up from the table and now it calculates it here. And the reason why we do this is because now you can use this technique everywhere in your database. Okay. If you've got form fields or report fields that you don't want to use this query for, you can just de-look up that value from the setting table and use it in your calculations automatically. And then all you have to do, save changes yes, is 
once a week, once a day, whenever you want to, open up your setting table. And you can make a nice, pretty little form for this if you want to. I'm not going to bother. You know how to make simple forms. You just come in here. Let's say that tomorrow the rate changes. is 1.28 now. Okay. Now, everywhere in your database where you have this query or where you're using this calculation, you get the new value in there. Okay. That's all you got to do. It's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. If you'd like to learn more in the extended cut for members, I will show you how to set up a table to track whatever currencies you want. Canadian dollars, New Zealand dollars, euros, Australian dollars, whatever. Whatever currencies you use, unlimited number of them. Okay, then we'll make a query where we can see all of them if you want to, right? $100 here is 85 euros, blah, 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 right? We'll make a custom function in VBA. So we just say, here's the dollar amount. Here's which cur currency value I want. Bring it back for me, okay? Then we'll put the preferred currency for each customer on their customer form. Okay, ignore the beeps. <laughs> and then we'll add that currency that the customer wants to use onto their invoices. So all the prices will still show up as US dollars. And then at the very end, we'll say in Canadian dollars for your convenience, here you go. Okay, that's all covered in the extended cut for members, 15 minutes long. It's a pretty good one. Uh, remember, Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos, not just this one, all of them. There's like 200 of them now. Getting there, close to it. Um, gold members can actually download these tech help templates. How do you become a member? Click the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different types of membership levels that are available. Silver members and up will get access to all of the extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and more. Gold members get access to a download folder containing all the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus access to my full beginner courses and some of my expert courses. These are the full length courses found on my website and not just for access. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, ASP, and lots more. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and feel free to post any comments that you have. I do read them all. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Click on the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of building databases with Access. It's over three hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. And if you like level one, level two is just $1. And it's also free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and you can send me your question there. Click here to watch my free access beginner level one course, more of my tech help videos, or to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching this video from accesslearningzone.com.